Friends, let us bow our heads in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, come, loving spirit of connection and fellowship and worship. Settle our hearts and center our minds to worship you with our full being this Pentecost day. In Christ we pray. Amen.
join me in the call to worship. Come, spirit of wisdom, and teach us to value the highest gifts. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, spirit of understanding, and show us all things in the light of eternity. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, spirit of godliness, stir up our minds and hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Let us worship God. Please be seated. We gather in this holy place that we might know and understand God better. Dear friends, welcome to worship at Bradley Hills Presbyterian Church on this Pentecost Sunday. What a joy to gather with each and every one of you here in this sanctuary and those gathered around the world on our live stream. Pentecost is a, a complex and and special day as we'll explore as we walk through this service, and we're so glad to connect with each one of you during this time. If you are newer to our community, welcome. On the website, you can find out information about our ministries, open up the bulletin, make a contribution through the Give Now icon, and learn about the ministries, and connect with members of the staff if we could share more about our very uh, varied ministries. For those who are newer, we have both the Red Fellowship pads and visitor cards that we could note. If you'd like more information about the church, we have some blue welcome guest packets in our narthex to take home and explore ministries of the church. We'd love to have the chance to walk the journey of life and faith with you. 
This Sunday marks the end of our really sort of program year, which runs from roughly Labor Day through Memorial Day. There are many programs in the summer, of course, too, but starting next Sunday, we will move to a single service at 10 o'clock. One service at 10 o'clock rather than the 8.30, 10.30 format that we'll start again in September. So starting next Sunday through the summer, we'll have a single service here in the sanctuary next Sunday, Trinity Sunday at 10 o'clock. And so at the end of the program year, we get to the place where some of our ministries transition through the summer. During the children's moment, we'll be recognizing some of them with thank yous today. I will note during our children's moment, following it, our uh, kids go to church school with the exception of the, the third through fifth graders will stay in worship today. And you'll see other announcements in the life of our community. One thing this afternoon, which I'll talk about later in the service. Our confirmation class gets going next fall for 8th and ninth graders or those who've not been confirmed. If you have interest to see myself or Rosanna, there is a middle school putt-putt gathering this afternoon. Some of my kids are looking forward to 5 o'clock in Gaithersburg. The middle schoolers will be playing putt-putt golf. And on the 2nd of June is our annual beginning of summer all-church barbecue. We'll provide some grilling uh, for folks and other things, but if folks can bring a, a side dish or a favorite salad or desserts to share uh, following that 10 o'clock service on uh, June 2nd, that'll be a fun way to begin uh, summer. Vacation Bible School, other announcements in the life of our community you'll see in your bulletins. Susan Boas' memorial service will be this coming Saturday, uh, the 25th at 1 o'clock here in this sanctuary, we note. And finally, as we look to pair our worship uh, with service as many weeks as we can, our Smart Sax mission program to support those in need in Montgomery County takes place following worship today in the lounge. Friends, let us open our hearts now fully to worshiping our God. Let us join together in the prayer of adoration and confession. God of life and all living things, your breath fills the universe and makes it alive. We praise you, O oh God, for the gifts of your spirit. Your love flows through all creation and makes us one. We praise you, O oh God, for the gifts of your spirit. Yet we know we have failed to value the lives, ideas, and the needs of others. Lord, forgive us. We have brought pain through division and exclusion. Lord, forgive us as we confess.
be seated. Boys, thank you so much for joining me here. For anyone, girls and boys joining online as well. So glad to be together on this particular day. Say, does, does anybody have a birthday this year? Anybody here have a birthday in 2024? Lots of hands are going up. It is exciting. I think we all have birthdays. At some point, birthday in, in May this month. Does anyone have a birthday this particular month? Happy birthday. Happy birthday this month. There are some folks that You know what today is, or what a little bit different? Yeah, well, Pentecost. Pentecost, exactly. The color is red. That is a day for Pentecost. Pentecost is the day that we celebrate on the church calendar. Pent, that number for Passover or Easter here. After Ascension Day, when Jesus went back up to heaven, you know what they say happened on Ascension Day? It's when Jesus finally decided to work from home for good. <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. That was a bad joke. And next week is Trinity Sunday. Today is Pentecost. Pentecost, we think about how the Holy Spirit came into the life of those disciples of Jesus and stayed there, and they, they gained abilities that they didn't have before, and this guy named Peter preached a sermon, and a whole bunch of people came and were baptized and joined the community known as the church. And so 2,000 years later, here you are, here I am, to celebrate this thing called the church, which some say got started in its own way around in a few moments ago. For your help, as we say thank you to some extraordinary ministry of the such a special place. I want to start with our choir. This is the the last day uh, where the choir does ministry and worship for the year. So, can you turn around real quick and say thank you, choir? Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. Beautiful music, and Solomon Collins has been part of us, and uh, part of the ministry is the Sutherland Scholar this year uh, in our ministry in our church. So will you turn around in particular and say thank you to Solomon, who's been with us this past year. Solomon, thank you. We, we know that we are not limited, the Spirit does not limit just us in this room. You know, there are people throughout the country, and frankly in several other countries, who watch us each week. And so, can you say thank you to the folks in the back who are a part of our live stream computer AV team? It's pretty cool. They help broadcast this out to all those people. See that little blue light right there in the back who are watching? Can you say thank you, AV team, and hello all? Do you see those flowers right uh, next to you uh, on either side and up on the table? We have a team uh, that puts together flowers called the Flower Guild. We have lay ministries, different committees and teams which do so many things in the life of our church, and we have many volunteers in our community. So can you say with me, thank you, Flower Guild? Thank you, Flower Guild. <laughs> Thank you, lay ministry teams. Thank you, lay ministry teams. And thank you, volunteers. Thank you, volunteers, because we are so grateful for the body of Christ. Each and every one of you here, I know in your own way, both gathered in person and those on the live stream, are involved in, in the activities of the life of the church that make it what it is. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Two last things. I, I want to honor two people in particular. Are, are, are Corky and Hickey here? Uh, Corky and Mary here? Corky uh, and Mary Hickey here? Yeah. Uh, so I want you, can I have two volunteers here? Um, we have a team of folks who you may have seen. We have ushers who help greet us when we come to worship and take care of so many things uh, around uh, worship. They're called ushers. And Corky Hickey has been the leader of the ushers for many years, and 
Mary Hickey has been the leader of what's called our Chancel Guild, and they help set up all the things around, like the table and other things in worship. And so Corky and Mary are two great leaders in our church, and this is, uh, they're, they're retiring from their leadership here. And could I have, uh, I have two flowers, could I have two volunteers, all right? Two volunteers. The first two hands I saw are right here. Will you go take those flowers to the back here? Uh, we've got some leaders here. Just, folks, give flowers here in gratitude to Corky and Mary in particular for their ministries. Thank you, friends. Thank you, dear friends. The Holy Spirit, which is the gift of Pentecost, certainly has flown, uh, flowed through the two of you and to bless, our, bless this church in many ways. Thank you. We, we know that their, their involvement just mirrors the involvement of so many others in this community, and we are grateful for that. And so the last thing I just ask of each and every one of you who is going to church school, I realize the third through fifth graders are going to stay in worship today. Help in saying thank you to your teachers. So the third through fifth graders can say thank you uh, another time. But as we finish our church school year, after we pray, I have some thank you cards which you made. And I'm going to ask the kids who are going to church school teacher to say thank you for teaching us this year. Okay? Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord for the church, for the volunteers, for its ministries. May your spirit bless us and the church and all those who are part of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may go back to the adults that brought you. And if you're going, hold on, hold on. If you want a card to give to your, if you're, if you're younger than third, third, take a card to your teacher, okay? Take one of the cards to your teacher and to say thank you for your uh, teaching this year as you go in peace. Go in peace. Today's first Bible reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. First in Korean, then in English. 오순절 날이 이미 이름에 그들이 다 같이 한 곳에 모였더니 허련히 하늘로부터 급하고 강한 바람 같은 소리가 있어. 그들이 앉은 온 집에 가득하여 마치 불이 혀처럼 갈라지는 것들이 그들에게 보여 각 사람 위에 하나씩 임하여 있더니 그들이 다 성령의 충만함을 받고 성령이 말하게 하심을 따라 다른 언어들로 말하기를 시작하니라 When the day of Pentecost had come They were together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other language 
as the Spirit gave them ability.
continue the Pentecost lesson from the second chapter of the book of Acts. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one of them heard speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear then each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, it is what was spoken through the prophet Joel, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents of heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. And then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes in Bible studies on Wednesday, we'll read different translations of the Bible text to to see, for example, how the King James sounds different from your pew Bible. Or we'll have our choir, will sing a particular part of Scripture, which then frames the rest of the service. Or as you heard Pastor Zhang this morning, lifting up a, a passage of the Bible in two different languages, all are very appropriate, especially at Pentecost. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come on this day of all days. Give us the gift of listening and openness and understanding. In Christ we pray. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, during one of our family walks, Bridget and I were walking in our neighborhood me sauntering and she power walking. That's for another sermon. But as we walked along, she unveiled to me a new app called Merlin Bird ID, which Bridget has downloaded. I see lots of nodding heads here. What Merlin Bird ID allows you to do is as you walk along and you hear birds chirping, the the phone will then identify exactly what bird you are hearing. So as we walked in a wooded area and we were quiet, we listened, and sure enough, on the phone it identified a a North American robin, or it said an Atlantic sparrow, or some sort of woodpecker there. I tried my own hand at this by making chicken and parrot sounds, much to the dismay of my walking partner, which didn't work so well on the phone app, but it, it successfully helped identify all the different birds that we heard in the tree. It was basically taking the the different language of these birds and and allowing us to understand something about them in our own language. In a way, the centerpiece of the Pentecost story is not too far from that. Pentecost, that word penta, pent, Five fifty was this, this great festival in the Hebrew Bible for the Israelites. Along with Passover and the festival of the tabernacles, the harvest festival in the fall, Pentecost would have, have, have flooded the, 
the city of Jerusalem with people from all over the Middle East. This is a, a day of weeks, seven days times seven weeks, 49. The next day, 50. The 50th day would have been Pentecost, and so Jerusalem would have been full of people from all over the region. And the wind began to blow, or at least there was a sound like a mighty wind, which entered into the place where the disciples, where the people of God were present. And it allowed them, among other things, to hear and understand this great diverse pool of voices and people in their own language. Pentecost is, is often thought about as a time of speaking, this idea of tongues. This color red comes from this phrase that their tongues were like flames on fire. And so we often think about Pentecost as a miracle of speaking. Some will say that, well, maybe it's like the speaking of tongues, which is, is actually a different New Testament gift. The real miracle at Pentecost was one that rather than speaking was one that was more of understanding. It was the people of God were able to listen and hear and understand what was being said. It used to be that people, when they would give their own languages in this time place, were this diverse panoply of experiences but here the real miracle is one of understanding and what gift could be more needed in our own time than the gift of understanding. Not too long ago, I was talking with somebody and I just missed their broader point. I was, I was focused on the specifics of what I heard right in front of me and I, I just missed the broader understanding of what they were trying to communicate and I just said the wrong thing in response. Have you ever done that? It's not, a, it's not a good feeling. I'm going to switch here, mics here, to see if it, see if it helps. Does that, does that work okay? All right, I hear some thumbs up there. In our time, when the Middle East is literally on flame because of misunderstanding between people of different perspectives, what gift could be more needed than the gift of understanding? At a time where Maryland passing its primary elections on Tuesday underscores the deep divisions in our own land, what gift could be more important than the gift of understanding? And at a time when I know too well that, like me, many of you walk relationship challenges or, or walk challenges at work or walk challenges at home where, where we're trying to do what is right and our intentions are good, but we just need a deeper gift of understanding. What gift could be more important? In the Middle Ages, uh, a man named Anselm of Canterbury famously coined a phrase of faith-seeking understanding. It was a theological precept that built on some of St. Augustine's ideas from centuries before. It, it basically said that once we have faith, we seek then to understand what it is we believe. In other words, we try to explore the depths of the faith that we confess. But the corollary to faith understanding is understanding as part of faith. In other words, that Pentecost miracle of first seeking to understand something or someone and out of that, recognizing all along that such healing was actually part of our faith. And so in the Pentecost story, it is often said by commentators that this is a reversal of the Old Testament Tower of Babel story. That in the book of Genesis, it was at one time the case, uh, according to the story, that there was one language among the people of the world. And, and so the people began to build this great tower to the sky to get close to God. And God didn't like this, thought this was a, an example of the pridefulness of humanity. And so confused the people by then creating a large diversity of languages. The story goes in the Genesis story that then the people were no longer able to communicate and they were no longer efficient or effective in building because they could not understand each other. And so they couldn't finish that Tower of Babel and from that point on there was a diversity of language in the world. The Pentecost story doesn't literally reverse the Tower of Babel. 
It does not then say that all of a sudden there's going to be one single language among the people of the world. Maybe Bitcoin will succeed in doing that someday, but I doubt it. I think the diversity of languages is here to stay. But there is a reversal of the Tower of Babel story in that what happened at Babel was people could no longer understand each other. And what happens at Pentecost is all of a sudden people get a gift of being able to understand each other in a way they could not before. That is the gift that we, who seek to be the people of God, need a fresh Pentecost in our own time. The Pentecost experience, by the way, in the Hebrew Bible was linked to the idea that the law was given at Pentecost to Moses on Mount Sinai. The church has a role in being a place of instruction and learning as well. As I explained to the children earlier, one of the things that we think about for Pentecost is in the second part of our lesson today, it is a birthday of the church. Peter begins to preach, and if you continue reading the rest of Acts 2, 3,000 people repent, are baptized, and, and form a community which then becomes the early church. As we think about the role of the church, this particular outpost of the body of Christ of Bradley Hills is, is leaning this afternoon heavily into this idea of seeking understanding of someone who is different from us. In Memorial Hall, from 3 to 5 this afternoon, our Intercongregational Partnership Committee is, is hosting a discussion on understanding those who are different th from us through having difficult conversations with friends. We're going to be gathered with our Jewish and Muslim partners here with some facilitators, some conflict resolution folks who are going to help lead us into a deeper understanding of each other and some tools to try to do the work of healing through understanding. Part of the calling of the body of Christ is to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit as a calling and commissioning to do such work. Because Pentecost has always been related to the concept of baptism. Pentecost, if you were in England, is sometimes called Whit Sunday. That is a, a refrain of White Sunday, and White Sunday because the color white was used for baptism, and those in the centuries ago who were not baptized at Easter would have been then baptized on Pentecost or Whit Sunday. The order of the Spirit coming in Acts 2 mirrors what happens in the bo book of Luke, and Luke writes both Acts and the Gospel of Luke. And so, when there is promised in Luke 1 and elsewhere that there will be a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and at Jesus' baptism when the Spirit descends like a dove and the voice from heaven says he's well pleased, the Holy Spirit is then present and Jesus is in a way commissioned to do the ministry that follows in the rest of Luke. Here, the baptism of the Holy Spirit is present. Right, John says, I'm going to baptize Jesus, but one who is more powerful than me will come and he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's present at Pentecost, where the people have fire present and they're baptized by the Holy Spirit to do the work of discipleship. And they do that in this great diversity of those present all in one place because the Spirit comes not to divide, but to unify around mission. And the mission of those disciples is then to go out and make disciples of all nations. Again, recognizing every ethnos, that's the literal word there used at the end of Matthew, all those nations of the world through the diversity that was present at Pentecost. So rather than the diversity of languages, which was seen as a punishment perhaps in Genesis, here in Acts, it seems that God had a plan all along. For a diverse world where people brought a rich tapestry of life experience, language, and culture, but where the calling of the people was always to seek and perhaps never arrive at a perfect place of trying to seek understanding of one another. And that, through the Holy Spirit, becomes some of the most critical work that we in the church can do. 
A couple weeks ago, I drove to the Montgomery Mall one Saturday night to pick up my daughter and some of her friends who were going to see the movie Kung Fu Panda 4. I parked in the parking lot. I walked into that food court area at the Westfield Mall, and I stood there waiting for my daughter to uh, arrive. And as I stood there, a gentleman came in and said he was from Uber, and he was there to pick up his ride, and he couldn't find uh, his client. She had texted him to go meet her at the nail salon on the second floor near Nordstrom's. And that escalator there near the food court was broken, and he asked me for directions. I said, well, I don't go to the mall that often. I'm not that familiar with the geography, but I do know where Nordstrom's is. And so I, I said, you know, you could maybe ask somebody there, and I sent him on his way. So after a while, I was waiting a little bit longer for uh, the moviegoers to arrive, and so I said, well, let's be efficient. Let's go get the car. So I went and got the car, and I pulled into that little circular area at the mall to sort of wait uh, for my daughter and friends to arrive. And there was a, a knock on my window, and I rolled down my window, and the woman said, Oscar? And I said, no, my name's David. And, and she said, well, look, I'm looking for my Uber driver. I'm trying to find this guy. I've been texting with him, and I've tried to figure out he's not here. I can't find him to pick me up. I said, I, I'm just here to pick up my daughter. But you know, I did a few moments ago see this guy inside. He was trying to find uh, the person who was testing. I sent him upstairs and all that. She says, well, I'm going to call him again. I can't find him, and snapped and walked off. Friends, during a time when unity in our world seems like it's just for the birds, at a time when faith-seeking understanding seems like a mirage, at a, at a time when we too often dismiss the experience or gifts of somebody else, the calling of Christ's people are to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit like those centuries before with gratitude. To recognize that even if we have the best of intentions and are trying to connect, we sometimes miss the mark. And so we need to offer each other grace. And if we want to be people who have a dream or see visions, what vision or dream could be more valuable or needed than that of seeking understanding? Because that kind of of saving healing is what we have something to contribute to. And so let us pray. Loving God, help each of us to open our hearts to the reception of the Holy Spirit. That Spirit might inspire us to listen, and to hear, and to hope that we might understand you and each other a little better. And in that way, play our role in the Spirit's work in the world. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
empowered by the compassion and care that God shows each day. From heart, sincere and bold, growing in every way, let us return a portion of our gifts to God, whose love uplifts our united hearts and whose grace forever extends, drifting through all, both great and small. be seated and join our hearts in prayer. Loving God, we, we gather on Pentecost as those did so many years ago, seeking the unity of the Spirit, for that is a gift. We are united in our hope for the world and for ourselves, but we are unique in our journeys. Not just in our languages, but in the blessings and the burdens that we carry. As we pray for Bob's family and those who walked journeys of life and love with him, as we pray for Peg and her family, as we pray for all those who are walking journeys of recovery, or healing, or uncertainty, as we pray for justice and peace in our own land and in lands called holy and in places of continents both near and far. We know that you hear our prayers of this day. So we are bold in silence or out loud now to lift up concerns and celebrations of our hearts.
O Lord, hear our prayers. As our mission refugee team has helped so many families, we give thanks for their ministry and ask the Spirit to be with them in their work. O Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for Marcia. We pray for all those who are grieving the loss of someone dear to them. O oh Lord, hear our prayers. Loving God, we thank you for hearing the prayers that we've lifted in silence or out loud now, as well as the ones that you invite during this week. For the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit present in the waters of creation, present in the incarnation of Jesus, present in motivating the people of God and the gospel stayed in a new way at Pentecost, and we are the heirs to its presence. So may that Spirit be with us this week, inviting us in the moments where we need an extra portion of presence to connect to you. For we lift all these prayers this day, the ones of our lips and those of our hearts, as well as the inspiration for the week to come in the name of the one who promised that he would bring a spirit as he ascended, the one who connects deeply as part of the Trinity to that spirit, our Lord, who invites us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, how be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Lord. Amen.
friends, go out into the world in peace. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil, but support the weak. Walk with the faint-hearted, honor and love all people, rejoicing always in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the presence of that Spirit be your gift this day and always. And together, may God's people say, Amen. Friends, let us share with each other now a sign of peace. May the peace of Christ be with you. And go in peace. Go in peace. Sir, your job fire.